My name is Elizabeth Troyer Miller, and this is my husband, Matt. We're from Wood River, Nebraska. We're centrally located in the state, just west of Grand Island. Uh, we had significant flooding in March of 2019, following a very cold winter with a heavy freezing in the ground, large amounts of snow, and then a sudden warm up that brought three inches of rain that melted everything very quickly. It caused widespread flooding for our region. I was sandbagging and I came home for lunch and I was able to walk. It was early lunch. I came home and I was able to walk across the road to our house in my boots. And then I, like an hour later, I went to cross again and I couldn't. I had to have somebody drive me across. And it was that moment when the sandbag operation flooded out. Like the town had always used that location uh, for sandbagging. Like in 2005, I think they'd sandbagged. In 1967, they'd sandbagged. There'd been other times. That was always where they sandbagged. It had never flooded out before. So that was the point when the community was like, oh, this is different. Eventually, we got back together at the fire department. He drove me back to the house in an ambulance. Because of what was happening in Nebraska, it wasn't just Wood River. So this was community after community. It was like a domino effect as the water came, like crisis after crisis, and the Red Cross was not equipped to do 90 counties at once. And so we had, you know, people who really cared, but they never set up a shelter before. And so they were scrambling, trying to figure out, like, where do we get cots from? Where do we, like, how do we do this? Um, and so we, it was good that we had locals here who could also just, like, navigate the local relationships. So that became our role over the next couple of days. Until you experience a disaster like this, you're just clueless. And you can hear about things like, I, you know, I listen to disaster experiences really differently now, and um, even though you know we've helped with clean out in other other places, until you've experienced it, you don't realize the levels of of impact this has on people's lives. And as a parent, um, experiencing this in the parenting role, how vulnerable it makes you. Um, because you're worrying about like all the adulting things that you have to do but you also have to care for like small children who are absorbing all the anxious energy around them and don't even know it. Where do we and how do we bring God's shalom to the people around us? And it became really clear in this like this is something that we can really do and um, so a job change came for me out of this. I had an invitation to step into a role in providing some leadership for the long-term recovery group and building relationships, bringing resources to town, work with our uh, community advocates who serve in the capacity of providing disaster case management and we really walk alongside folks in their recovery process, let them identify what their goals are and then help make a plan for achieving that. Sometimes it's just getting cash in hand to do the work that needs to get done. Sometimes it's providing emotional support and being that cheerleader who says, you can do this. You want to do this one little thing? Okay, like I'm going to check in with you in a week and we're going to figure out how you can do that one little thing. And now let's take on the next little thing. There are people here who need help just as much as the people in somewhere warm and maybe a fun destination location. And I think that goes for anywhere there's a disaster. It's more about the need and where, how do we serve um, the body of Christ and it's going where the need is. And right now, it's not just Wood River. There were 93 counties here in Nebraska and there are long-term recovery groups covering a third of this state. And so this road to recovery locally is just a tiny piece of the puzzle of what's happening across the state and we just need people who are willing to give up time to put people's lives back together.